Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Catholic mm-hmm. Table Talk Podcast. This is the podcast where I think Catholic is always on the table for discussion. And with this podcast, it wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be able to do it without your continued support, whether word of mouth, you like, subscribe, and share on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram. We are growing constantly still. Thanks to you, all of you. So thank you very much. It wouldn't be possible without to, without you. If you have a speaker or a show request, please feel free to message the show at Catholic TT, that is two T's at gmail.com. Again, Catholic TT at gmail.com. Now you might have wondering, there are many, there are many different catechisms out there. You got the Baltimore, the Catechism of Catholic Church. How are they different? Are they different? You might be asking. Well, I have the speaker, my guest, is here to explain the outlines of them. And he's been on the show before. He's been on episode 25. We did the cool stuff in the Gospel of Mark. And I found that to be very, very interesting. And he came back with another great, interesting topic about the, out, the outlines of the catechisms. So, of course, I'm like, yeah, you can come back. That sounds very, very fun. And we had a great time with them back in episode 25. So if you have not watched that yet, please do so. His name is Dan Egan, and he is an uh, instructor on Homeschool Connections, and he's back with us here at the table. So, Dan, thank you for taking your time and your busy life and your willingness to come back on the show. Well, thank you for having me, Billy. I really appreciate it. Well, like I said, it was a very fun time the first time around, and I think this is going to be kind of similar. Um, You said there's a lot of stories to tell, so I can't wait for it. So let's jump right in. Is One of the catechisms you're going to be talking about is the Baltimore Catechism. So what is the Baltimore Catechism, and how is it, or is it really different from other catechisms? Yeah, so um, the the big catechism that was popular um, in centuries past was the Catechism of the Council of Trent, which is this huge volume, and that was written by St. Robert Bellarmine, but he wrote a smaller one called the Small Catechism, I think it's called the Small Catechism, and it was done in a question-answer form. And the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops um, uh, met in Baltimore three times and and they discussed, hey, we need to have one that um, for the American people. And they had translations of his smaller one, but they wanted one that was more complete. And so eventually someone wrote one in like 10 days. And then after uh, that, I can't remember the name of the priest who wrote it. But it became very popular, and that became the first version of the Baltimore Catechism. So there are actually several versions of the Baltimore Catechism out there. And people were, um, like especially priests and scholars, were saying this needs to be uh, kind of refined and and polished up a bit. And eventually, over a 10-year period, it was in the early 1900s. And that's where we get like Baltimore Catechism number one, number two, number three, and number four. And the most popular one is Baltimore Catechism number two. And so I think that was considered the original, the original uh, catechism. And then there was one, uh, number one, which was like for kids uh, receiving for the first Holy Communion and confession. And then they added number three for kids going into um, their confirmation. And then number four is called an explanation of the cate- Baltimore Catechism used for like teachers in advanced classes. And that gets into some pretty awesome stuff that even little kids would be interested in. Some good stories and going in, d- digging into the scriptures, um, yeah. which is anyway, which is very cool. So the significance of it is that it's, a question answer form that makes it easy for memorization. Um, and that was used, that was the standard, usually the American standard up to 1960s. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, first of all, I, very cool. Um, I know there was multiple versions of the Baltimore 
uh, catechism. I did that we we call off the top of my head how many. Um, and I think it's really cool that they kind of, like you said, one is for one group more so. The last yeah. group is for teachers. Um, and I think people like like you said, it's number four is young young kids could kind of get involved or they might like it. So it's not just you're in uh, volume number one, so you have that one. You can right. have uh, multiple uh, versions as well. So like that's pretty cool. And yeah, it, yeah, yeah. They so, so they and they so they build on one another. Right. And uh, as a school teacher, I've been kind of stuck in Baltimore Catechism number one because I teach third and fourth grade. And um, when I first started teaching, I was like, oh, my goodness, it's so simplistic. And I kind of thought boring. But as I studied it more, like, and kept teaching it for 15 years, <laughs> yeah. I realized they summarized topics perfectly. And it's really amazing. Um, uh, and I've been blessed that I got stuck in it. But uh, everyone would benefit from all of them. And so it's kind of been abandoned for these kind of narrative uh, catechisms where they tell it, they don't tell a story, but they, um, they kind of wrap it up. A lot of uh, textbooks now uh, wrap them up into a story and present the catechism that way, which can be good, but you need something that's like, hold on, back up. What is it that I need to believe? You know, what are the solid things I can stand on? And that's where the question answer part comes in. That's, I think, great. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's how I learn. Um, yeah. I, I mean, it's kind of like, yeah, hold up here. I'm not that far ahead, um, you know, so that's where, that's where I learn the most, definitely. Yeah. And then, of course, we have the Catechism of the Catholic Church done in like the 1980s and 90s. And that's... Um, I think that's beautiful. The way that it's written is beautiful. It gets deep. I do have to reread some sentences because the sentence is a whole paragraph. I have to kind of take it apart. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, uh, they uh, they make it so you could kind of pray it. And um, so many ref footnotes and references. And it really shows the richness of the Catholic faith in the hands of lay people. And um, that, along with the Catechism of the Council of Trent, it's just it's really the shows the beauty of our faith the depth of our faith and uh it's really amazing which yeah. uh yes kind of brings up the second part about its outline it does i, I know <laughs> i know i mean the question i had what does outlines mean well yeah yes yeah. so that was kind of a random question but uh <laughs> yeah, yeah so Go ahead. okay so i wondered how are all these topics connected? So, so in every catechism, they have four parts or, and the new catechism calls the four pillars. And they might've been called that before. I just don't know. But we have the creed, the sacraments, commandments, and prayer. The creed uh, it, where it, it goes through and explains the apostles creed and then gets into the Nicene creed. Some of them, the commandments, it follows the 10 commandments and um, develops those, um, the sacraments, and then finally prayer, and it goes to the Our Father, and then different kinds of prayer, depending on which level you're at. Sure. And so um, I kind of wondered, like, what's the big picture? It feels like there are these separate sections, but how are they interrelated? And right. the new catechism does an excellent job of pointing that out. And I do not have an example for you. And, but the examples are at the beginnings of the chapters or around the beginnings where they show, they do show how they're related. So for example, here's what I found out. Okay. So Jesus died. Uh, uh, God created the world. So we're getting to the creed. Uh, God created the world. Adam and Eve fell into sin. God sends his son to fix it uh, through his life, death, and resurrection and ascension into heaven. And uh, that happened 2,000 years ago. Okay, I live 2,000 years later. How do I get that? How do I meet Jesus today? You know, that happened so long ago. And it's he institutes the sacraments to bring us in touch with those things. 
And so the sacraments really uh, bring the creed alive for us or bring the creed into our lives, so to speak. And, um, you know, the sacraments are how we touch Jesus. Like the, uh, the woman who is bleeding, she has the hemorrhage and she's been bleeding for 12 years. And she says, if I just touch the fringe of his garment and she touches him and then he stops, it's like, hold on, somebody touches me, somebody touched me. And they're like, that's everybody's touching you, Jesus. Right. <laughs> and he's, and, but he, it says, I think it says in the gospel, of Luke, he felt power go out. Um, and so it's the uh, catechism of the Catholic Church, the green one, the new green one says uh, the sacraments are powers that that flow forth from the body of Christ. And those powers are what put us in touch with Christ and the creed into his life. So now we're kind of like in the creed. We're associated with the apostles and, and the structure of the church. And so they were in that and that we're a child of God and God is our father, which kind of brings us into prayer <laughs> um, and talking to God. But okay, now that I'm a child of God, now what am I? Am I good to go? Am I cool? Like, can I keep living the life I'm supposed to live? No, no, no. You're supposed to now live um, like someone in heaven lives. And that brings it up the commandments. And so uh, the sacraments transform me so that I can live out, out the commandments and, um, and be a child of God, be Christ. Let Christ live through me today in Fort Wright, Kentucky, and you, in your state, with your <laughs> with your family, you know, and where you are, and in your place and time, and um, bring Christ, bring Christ to the world and His kingdom, and and then we share this great relationship with the Father, our Heavenly Father, our our home, where we're adopted, that we're longing to go, that we're in exile, and the prayer is what. Um, now that we belong to God in his kingdom and we're in his house, uh, we're expected to have this dialogue with him. And so um, that's where how all those things get wrapped up together is that the creed, which is this historical event, but it's we're brought into it through the sacraments, um, which then let us empower us to live out the commandments and wrap this all together with prayer. And uh, that's that's the outline of every catechism, except in this, in these catechisms, like the Baltimore catechisms, they just say there's the creed. Uh, here's what Jesus lived, died, and rose so that we could be joined to him and give us the church. Here are the teachings of Jesus. Now, here is how you get connected to Christ and his teachings. And so it just, it just instead of going creed, sacraments, commandments, prayer, like the new catechism does, it just goes creed commandments, sacraments, and prayer, but it has still has those four parts. Okay. And um, you see it as a whole, like it, the whole thing goes together. Right. And to separate one part out is to, you're, you can't really, you can't do that. Uh, it, it all goes together. And yes, that's, that's what I wanted to share. <laughs> the beauty, awesome. the beauty of that. anyway. Well, I mean, truthfully, I think of it as the uh, as kind of I'm not think of it as, but it kind of it's like the Bible, you know. Um, lots lots of stuff in the Bible in the Old and New Testament, you know, twine, and you can't read it just one part of it because it somewhere going that down that line, it you know, trains with something that it either happened in the Old Testament or it's going to happen in the New Testament. And I love how they explain how they connect um like you mentioned um that to me that's that's how the light bulb goes off um yeah. so that's that's really great and i highly recommend um all catholics read the catechism every day as like they should with the bible because it explains the faith and like you said previously you gotta know at least what ground to stand on and then take those steps so you can get more and more um, the bats. So with all that being said, Dan, um, which outline have you have, have you become more 
kind of app choice that you're not afraid with, but that you really enjoy digging deeper into. I, I, I really enjoy the new one. Uh, in the uh, the green volume of the uh, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, I love it because again you could pray with it. Um, number one, number two, each section is summarized with the in brief parts, and then it has so many cross references that to dig into Scripture and then to the Church Fathers, and if you have access to those, and uh, and uh, you know Church Councils and things like this. And uh, scripture, of course, but um, it, I think it really reveals how the depth of faith uh, that, that Christ gave to us, you know, it's, um, you know, who made you God, like the catechism says, who made you God made you, why did God make you to know love and serve him in this world to be happy with him in the next. And so um, these other catechisms expand on that. But the new one goes even deeper, um, you know, after studying 500 more years after the Catechism of the Council of Trent, the church does have deeper insights. And, and it, it's kind of saying the people can handle it. Um, the people can handle digging deeper. And so I'm glad that they made that available. But um, and then again, it has those summaries at the beginning and sometimes even in the middle of the chapters of the new catechism, which I am feeling like an idiot that I don't have a prop to hold up every time. But <laughs> looking around at my books slowly. Um, yeah, I don't have one to show you, but, um, you know, and then it, it puts all these things together. Like, you know, we say the three theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity. Well, that's, in some sense, the faith is revealed in the creed, our hope is revealed in the sacraments, and our charity is revealed in the commandments. And see, it, it like digs out stuff like that, like, oh my gosh, I've never put the three theological virtues with the parts of the catechism. Like, that's incredible. Or our three vocations of being a priest, prophet, and king. Um, and... It, it brings that out that we share, and, and that's just from Vatican II, and of course, and not just from Vatican II, but it, Vatican II brings that out more. But it, it's kind of like sharing that with the people, and I, I like that they give us deeper stuff to think about, I guess. And how do I live this out in my daily life? And I feel like that it, that is revealed in those in those uh, in those pages. Having said that, there are other great catechisms um, that, so for example, there's this one called the Catechism in Anecdotes and Examples. And so it's really just the catechism in stories. And so it says something like, who made you? God made me. But then it tells three or four stories about, does God exist? Um, how do we know God exists? How do I know that I'm a made for God? And so that's all that it is. It's stories. And um, then you go to the next question. And then it, you know, it's history. It shows uh, stories about um, the saints and how they reveal these different things in their lives. And those things, you know, like, I wish those were more readily available. Like people spoke about these things. Um because that's what I'm finding is truly exciting is this stuff and not television, <laughs> yeah. you know, all the Marvel movies as exciting as they are, um, are not as exciting as this. There's a real drama there that you get to participate in. And I kind of just jump in here, Dan. Um, yeah. Like that catechism. I mean, that would be almost a good, almost uh, bedtime catechism. You're laying in bed, you're about to go to sleep. You pop open, you can do that in all your Bible, but you can pop open and read your story about how, why, or how does God exist? And maybe the next day uh, someone asks you that question. So, I mean, that's just one example. Yes, that's, that's it exactly. And, um, and uh, it's, it, and then that part gets into church history. Like, oh yeah, it's like there was a king, St. Louis, you know? <laughs> 
so it talks about there's like this part that talks about sin and um you know trying to avoid sin is the is the is how important that is and that um king saint louis's uh mother said i'd rather you die than you know commit one mortal sin right. and of course saint rita prayed that her children <laughs> would not um avenge their father's death and then they died you know instead of commit this terrible sin but uh yeah our faith is really alive and um the more we you study it the more you are talking to god about it the more you see it and get to live it out and and be christ to wherever you are in your place and time and uh that's the true adventure everybody's looking for this everybody's looking for this and it's right in front of us we just have to do it <laughs> yeah but, uh, and that's why your show's great because you're 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 announcing this to all sorts of people <laughs> so right. um I, I appreciate you letting me talk about it well, i mean i appreciate you having on um, oh, sure. i mean truly truly the um our faith uh, the catholic faith is alive and well everyone wants to dig deeper like you mentioned everyone wants to dig deeper um for me, COVID was a big part of that. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, I just took kind of going to church for granted a little bit. And I just like, I can't do that no more. And yeah. that's just where the show came from, um, was from COVID and all that stuff. People want to uh, dig deeper um, yeah. because they know, hey, it's not about my life. It's, I gotta be like, it's like Christ like to everyone in my life. Because being Catholics is not about just going to Sunday Mass. It's about being Catholic every single day of your life. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I would have to be with you later. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's, um, I, t I told the kids, uh, my third and fourth graders, I said, do you ever wonder why your parents don't talk about Legos <laughs> <laughs> or toys or movies? Or, you know, did you see yeah. Finding Nemo? How exciting that was. Um. I said, because reality is actually more exciting right. than these other stories. And there are so many more twists and turns and, oh my goodness, you wouldn't believe what he said. Right. And uh, if people put him in movies, they'd say, oh, that's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the truth is stranger than fiction. But uh, living the Catholic faith, you read about the lives of the saints and how they're living out their Catholic faith and putting it into practice and that's even more exciting. Yes. Um, but that gets us into a different topic. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we're talking about living out the catechism. Yes. yes. Yeah. So and, and just yeah, really quick on knowing if you don't if you don't know your faith, you probably won't know what you're supposed to be living out. Right. You know, like people know, oh, I'm supposed to be feeding the hungry and clothing the naked. It's like, yeah. So are you doing that? I guess I'm not like, well, what if I give money to other people who are, who are doing it? Yeah. Then you're participating in your work, in their work by your funds. So, okay. Then I'll do that. <laughs> I'll do that. But yeah, you have to keep that in mind. You have to keep reviewing it. That's what I'm, that's all. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's what, I mean, that's true. That's where you keep reviewing it. That's why you keep reading your Bible, uh, the catechism, less of daily, if you can. Um, because I mean, you gotta know, you gotta find at least the common ground, and you have to. If someone asks you a question about the faith, because probably someone up there that you might not know that they know that you're Catholic, and they pop you a question, and you have no idea because you have really dug into your faith a lot. Yeah, um, that's that's not. I mean, it's okay, but that's where you kind of wake up, coward, to get busy with doing your faith. So. Right. Um, I just we talk over everything that I want to talk about. Um, there's nothing really new that really stood, uh, pop uh, pop into my brain, should I say? Um, can I can I add something? Go ahead. Okay, super fast. Okay. Yeah. Um, imagine imagine stopping learning how to read in second grade, and so you can only read at a second grade level. You know that's not going to work as an adult. Um, I'm like, you won't even be able to read the newspaper, right? you know, and um, 
people's ideas of paying taxes and things like this. You won't understand and you can get easily tricked and uh, flustered. And so it's not enough to read just Baltimore Catechism number one. You have to read number two, but that's not enough. You know, we have to, <laughs> we, want, we want to, our, we don't want to just have, have the knowledge of a fifth grader in our faith. We want to have an adult's knowledge because we're adults so that we can function exactly. in, in this world with all these terrible temptations. And then things are so weird, you know, um, Baltimore Catechism number one does not mention transgenderism. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? You know, or yeah. any abortion for that matter. And so that's, um, so we want to make sure we keep up our studies so as to, like you said, be able to answer people. Well, like St. Peter said, and, you know, be ready to give it an, a reason for what you believe. Right. And so we, that's why you also need to keep up your faith. Okay, I'm done now. Oh, wow, that's, that's okay. good. That's terrific. Because, like, they, they came out with the new catechism because people wanted to, I mean, kind of up, kind of update it so wow. people found, you know, they, they knew what the Catholic faith meant today because... Yeah. I mean, the Catholic faith doesn't really change, but we kind of change, so I gotta keep up. Um, we have to keep up. But so I guess, would you recommend these books for like, would you get them one at a time, or would you do them one all at once? So what would you recommend for, for say, a confirmation student, um, yeah. so like a friend? Um, yeah, so you want to kind of meet people where they are. And again, there are so many books, well, apologetic books. Um, but just throwing this out there. So I used to work at this Catholic bookstore and people would come in for baptism gifts for an infant. And they'd, they'd go to the baptism infant section. And I'd say, you know, these things are nice. You know, there's like a little baby water, you know, holy water font. I said, but they're only going to be a child for a little bit. You know, they're going to be adult and adult a lot longer. And so you might want to get them like the Catholic answer Bible that it's a Bible, but it has these as the uh, like articles written by uh, David Armstrong, who's an apologist from around uh, Michigan. And um, it's, a, it's on like 120 different topics, just one page. And I said, now this is not appropriate now for their baptism. But just think, like starting around sixth grade, they might have questions and you can keep referring them back to this and saying, I just want to let you know that these answers are available to you. And so you might want to make them available or at least have them on your shelf. And of course, all these things are available online, but there is something about having a hard copy um, a hard copy, like exactly like you said, you don't want to be staring at your phone before you go to bed. Yeah. Um, you know, I can't sleep for some reason. I've been staring at a light. Um, so, uh, you know, ha having a book that you can open up, read a paragraph, read a couple questions to think about. And then um, hopefully, you know, those are your last thoughts before you go to bed. And, it, and it, in fact, you know, the church has a blessing. A blessing. Let me see if it's in this first one. For studying your faith for, um, hold on, 20 minutes a day, 20 minutes to a half an hour. So uh, there's a, a special indulgence for reading, studying your faith for 20 to 30 minutes a day. Um, so the church encourages, so even, you know, you, you'll be blessed in more than one way by just studying. But, uh, you know, if, if, if you don't know your faith very well, of course, you'd want to start with this, an easier one. And maybe if you're like, no, I'm, I'm pretty well catechized, but I've, I've never really gotten into the catechism. Well, start getting into it and turn to a section you're interested in through the index or look at the in brief parts and see how they summarize it. Um, that can be a way, um, but read it, just read it, just get into the habit of reading it. Um, I can't tell you how beneficial that's been to me and, um, all the richness and, you know, some parts I've had to read a few times because they are kind of challenging to read. Yeah. Um, but we don't want to be ignorant 
of our faith as adults, or really of at any age, and especially now when our faith is so under attack. True. Nice. And there are so many people claiming, you know, to know what Catholics believe. We want to make sure we actually do know what Catholics believe. And unfortunately, saying I went to 12 years of Catholic school is, is not cutting it. You have to keep going. It's, it's a joy. It's a joy. It, yeah. Yep. Well, that's so, Yeah. I'll shut up. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, I, I keep cutting you off. So I'll, what were you going to say? I was just going to say, like, um, you know, like you said, when they were born, I mean, you got to give them something for the older. Like, my sister was having a kid, so it's like, I probably should give her something that she would enjoy when she's older more that she might remember. Um, so that, I like that. I love that example right there that you gave. Okay. So, okay, well, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, is there anything else, Dan, you'd like to conclude with? I, not off the top of my head, but... Um, it, there are tons of catechisms. Um, and, you know, sometimes you read one and it it is the question answer form and you don't like that. Well, find another one. Um, find another one out there. You're, you're probably not going to find one that contradicts, hopefully don't con find one that contradicts the faith. Right. But um, you want to read something um, all the time. Just, you, you got to, we got to keep up our faith you know, really, our Catholic faith is the only thing that's still acceptable in society to make fun of. You can't make fun of Muslims. You know, if you if you make fun of any other religion, you're going to get pounded on. But you make fun of the Catholic faith, you're still good. And there's a reason for that. And it's because <laughs> the devil's in charge of the world. Exactly. And uh, um, we have to be ready to say, hey, that's not that's not actually what we believe. And uh, I just read that the other day in the catechism. We're, we <laughs> we shouldn't be saying God's name in vain <laughs> as much as you do because God gets offended. You wouldn't say your mother's name in vain, would you? Um, so anyway, but uh, okay. Awesome. Well, I like I like where you end that we got to keep up our faith. And that was a great quote right there. Quote okay. by Dan Egan. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, otherwise, I mean, I would... I learned a lot, so thank you again, Dan. Oh, thank you for having show. me. Cool. I hope I hope uh, the audience got a lot of great information out of it. And like Dan said, people, uh, listeners, get catechisms wherever you're kind of in your faith life, and uh, just start digging because you get indulgence if you listen if you dig into your faith daily, twenty yeah. or thirty minutes. So, yeah, that, that's another that's another motivation to do it. So. Right. Yep. All right. Bless, blessings galore. Yep. Exactly. Praise God. All right. Well, thank you, Billy. Awesome. Well, thank you, Dan. That is Dan Egan, everyone. Um, don't forget, he's on Homeschool Connections. You can sign up with classes for him. I'll have that in the comments below the link. Well, thank you. Right to his, yeah, right to his courses. So if you have kids, without delay, please sign them up before the next semester begins. So for Dan Egan, this is William Sauber. Thank you again for listening or watching the podcast. Hope to see you next week. God willing, and God bless you and your family. We at Catechism and Bible Daily. And we'll see you next week at the table for Catholic Table Talk podcast, where everything Catholic is on the table.